guys. Um, let's see, today I have a couple different things to tell you about. Um, well, I've read three books since we last talked, since I last talked at you. Um, so I'm going to review those today. And then there's also a really cool book I got for Christmas, just because, um, that I wanted to kind of go over with you too, that I've read, but it's only like 22 pages or something. Maybe not even that. Um, but it's a cool book. You'll see what I mean. You'll see. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So I'm Stephanie. Um... I love to read. I'm obsessed with reading. I do my one video now that's my crafting and life advice, life whatever video. Um, and then I do this video on my channel that is book reviews because I read so much and people are always asking me for book recommendations or things like that. And because I read so much, sometimes you know, a couple months down the road, I won't remember much about the book I've read. One, the numerous books I've read, right? So when people ask me, I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know. So I can document all that and put it on here um, and tell you guys what I think of the books. I also, and I think I kind of touched on this in my last episode, I don't like that books don't have ratings. I wish they did. Not because I want to banish myself from certain rated books or, or whatever, but I don't like when I'm reading a book that I really love the plot and then it gets really vulgar. Um, or I also don't like if it looks like it's something for, you know, a teenager to read, something that they might like, and then it has some of that stuff in it. They don't need to be reading. Um, so I'll tell you. When I read these books, I'll tell you if there's things I found that maybe were offensive or maybe you want to watch out for. Um, I'll tell you what my rating, what I rate the book and kind of what my review is. Oh, let me get more comfy in this. This is my big comfy chair I got for Christmas, I think, last year or the year before. I love it. Um, this is my, this is a painting that my cousin and his wife made for me like 15 years ago. Um, they told me at the time that they painted those circles in with their toes and you can only see a small portion of it, but guys, it's huge. It's like five feet by four feet or something. I don't know. Five feet by three feet, maybe. It's huge. I love it. Um, anyway, let's get started with, uh, with these books. Um, let's start with this one. This is the first, first book I read, um, since we last talked. And I know because I have the camera facing me, I know that when I show you things, it looks backwards, which is totally dumb. Um, I suppose I don't have to have the camera facing me, but here's, here's the deal. We'll get back to that book in a minute. Here's the deal. I could turn the camera around so that it's not the forward-facing camera, but if I can't see myself, I've got to be talking to someone, guys. Like, it's crazy in here talking to myself. So... Uh, it's crazy enough talking to myself, but if I had the camera turned around so that I couldn't see myself on the screen either, that might get really weird. I mean, like, not like I'm not weird as it is, but whatever. Anyway, so because it's forward-facing so that I can see myself, because I love seeing myself, um, these will be backwards to you. But I'll post pictures at the end um, of my video to of each of the books that I talk about today and then um, I also down below in the notes below the video I'll put what each book title is in the author so you can look them up um, this is the rules of survival by Nancy Worland um, I actually only gave this book I think two stars I think yeah um, I've told you my rating system before, guys. Yeah, I gave it two stars. I um, I very rarely do a one star or a five star. One star is if I just couldn't finish the book because it was just that awful. And a five star is it was so amazing it's changed my life in some way or something. I don't know. It has to be something spectacular. Um, I gave this one a two. So really, once you take out the ones and the fives, because those are like, you know, extremes for me, two is my lowest rating. And I gave this one a two. Um, 
it is the story of um, a boy named Matt. And in this book, he this book is set up, the whole book is him writing a letter to his sister about things that they survived in their lives. And it's his little sister. And he's writing it in a way that, you know, I don't know if you remember that this is how it went, but he talks about some abuse and some domestic violence and things that they were witnesses to. And the way that they worked so hard to rescue themselves from that situation. Um, because of the population I work with, right? I'm a therapist. Um, I work with kids in foster care. So there were some themes in here that really rang true with things I do every day with my the kids I work with. But... I don't know. This book just didn't appeal to me. And usually... I don't know. Parts of it, I think, moved really slow. I think there were parts where I was like, oh, let's get a move on here. Um, I don't know. It was, it was, there were parts that are, were a little hard to read because of um, the violence and things. I mean, it wasn't graphic. It wasn't, it wasn't graphic. It was just hard to realize. And maybe it's because of the perspective I come from with the foster kid population I work with. Um... Maybe some of the things in here were really realistic for me, and so it was harder for me to get lost in a in a novel that was interesting because it was so real life for me. Does that make sense? You might enjoy it, though. Um, I'll read the back for you. Um, for Matt and his sisters, life with their cruel, vicious mother is a day-to-day -day struggle for survival. But then Matt witnesses Murdoch coming to a child's rescue in a convenience store, and for the first time, he feels a glimmer of hope. Then, amazingly, Murdoch begins dating Matt's mother. Life is suddenly almost good. But the relief lasts only a short time. When Murdoch inevitably breaks up with their mother, Matt knows that he'll need to take action. Can he call upon Murdoch to be his hero, or will Matt have to take measures into his own hands? Um, there were some really interesting things in here. Um, it wasn't all bad, but for me, I think it, it was a little... Well... It was a little too realistic, but not so much. I mean, there's all this serious abuse happening and all these adults know and nobody did anything. And I know that's real life. I know that happens in real life. But for me, it was hard, hard to read in this book. It just wasn't my, just wasn't a book that I'd ever want to really read again. But a lot of people love it. So it could just be probably a lot in part of, you know, a lot of it to do with what I deal with daily with with work so um that's the rules of survival it wasn't oh guys i'm sorry my nose is driving me nuts it was a national book award finalist um i don't know who really awards that award but um it has good reviews and things um anyway if you want to know more about it my favorite place like i told you is goodreads.com you can go on there and find any book that's ever been published they will give you a synopsis. There's tons of reviews on there from other readers. Um, it has a virtual bookshelf on Goodreads so that you have a bookshelf for books you've read, a bookshelf for books you want to read, a bookshelf for books you're currently reading, and it keeps track of all of that for you. I love Goodreads.com, so look into that if you like to read. Even if you don't, even if you're not a big reader, that's all, always a good spot to find your next book you want to read. In fact, Many times, you know, you'll read a book or you'll find a book on there you like and then it says other people who like this book also liked and it lists other books and you can read their plots and decide if you want to read them. I love Goodreads. It feeds my reading obsession though, so that's crazy. <laughs> Good or bad, I don't know, but I do like to read. And I think for me, I, I like to read to kind of get lost in a different reality or something, you know, to kind of, it's my coping thing, it's my stress relief and I think this one was just a little too much my normal day-to-day -day life not my life here in my house but with people I work with maybe it was it wasn't enough of a fictional story for me or something I don't know I don't know what it was but um that one just didn't and I don't know that the writing was really like it didn't just it didn't draw me in I wasn't intrigued and feeling like oh I need to read some more I kind of read it because I was like oh I need to finish this book um so that's that book um let's see I have two more books I read um 
I listen to. Because I told you I do a lot of dri- a lot of driving. I think I listen to both these other ones. Yeah. Um, so I have two more to review for you. But before I do that, I want to go through this other book I got for Christmas. And then we'll go back to the book reviews. Um, I got this book from Santa. I've wanted this book for quite a while, ever since I heard that it existed. The Pop-Up Book of Phobias, guys. <laughs> now... I love psychology. I love phobias. Like, I think phobias are fascinating to read about and and whatever. So I thought, oh, this book is going to be cool. And I read some good reviews on it and things, and I love it. Like, it, it's a really, not super informative, not super, like, in-depth, but it's fun. It's a fun book. Um, I wish it had more pages. It has, it only lists maybe 10 phobias, maybe less. I wish it had more because that would be super cool because that's just intriguing to me. But I will share with you my pop-up book of phobias. So the first phobia, I don't know how well you guys will be able to see these, but the first phobia is dentophobia. I think that's what it's called. Yep. Fear of dentists. Uh, Fear of dentistry. Fear of, uh, yeah. For the most part. This one is called Aerophobia. Can you tell what that is? That is a fear of airplanes. <laughs> so you see here you've got pieces of airplane that are flying off on fire. You've got their coffee is spilled. Their fishies. You've got the gas mask that's dropped down from the ceiling. So that's Aerophobia. You have... Ophidiophobia, I think is how you say that, and that's a fear of snakes. Let's see. Well, that's kind of a cool one. Let's see. This is claustrophobia. You know what claustrophobia is? Tight spaces, tight and closed spaces. That man in that picture, he's trying to get into the elevator that's already too tight, and this man is looking really wary of this elevator. This is uh, mysophobia. Mysophobia is the fear of contamination. So it doesn't just mean bathrooms. Mysophobia, look, this toilet opens all the way, whatever. Um, It's the fear of contamination. So um, pathological fear of exposure to unsanitary or disease producing substances, including dirt, germs, mud, excrement, and sputum. Um... They found that this condition often leads to obsessive compulsive disorder, such as repet- repetitive hand washing, and on and on and on. Anyway, mysotherapy. If you watched my um, shoes that sparkle video, one of um, one of my crafting videos. I don't know which one, but I tell you about my phobia. That's a mysophobia. It falls into that category. Um. This one is called glossophobia. It's a fear of public speaking. Um, performance anxiety, stage fright fits into this. That's a microphone coming at you when you open it. See, so um, arachnophobia. Just a giant spider coming off the page at you. Oh. Um. This is acrophobia, which, see how that works? Look, it looks like you're standing on top of this huge building. This is standing on top of this building and looking down. Fear of heights. That does a pretty good job illustrating it when I look at it from that point of view. Like when I'm turned looking at it my way, it doesn't look that awesome. Right here, that looks awesome. So yeah, acrophobia, intense dread of heights. Um... Oh, that's a lollipop seed that just pops out. My nephew was looking at this book the other day and he's like, oh, and this guy's sword just pops out at you. He didn't know it was like a fear, a book of fears or whatever. It was cute. Um, this one's called Coolrophobia. Overwhelming fear of clowns. Um, they say this can usually be traced, this phobia can usually be traced back to unpleasant experiences in childhood at a circus. 
negative circus experiences in early childhood. That's funny. I think my brother, Jonathan, he lives in Ohio. He's afraid of clowns. And that, I think, stems from he watched the movie It when he was little. And I've never seen that. I don't know much about it, but he's afraid of clowns since then, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. He's also afraid of E.T., so just putting that out there. Um, look, guys, I'm not wearing a hat today. My hair is actually, like, down and out. Crazy. But that'll probably be the only time you see my hair down and out without me wearing a hat. This one is, I'll tell you what it's called, necrophobia, which is the fear of being buried alive. See that? You're buried in all this dirt. Um, first, oh, let's see. Morbid dread of one's own demise. So, fear of dying, fear of... The focal point of the distress is typically two-tiered. First, obsession with the physical pain and degradation that death imposes. And second, apprehension of the absolute solitude of the grave. So not being buried alive, it's, it's being dead. It's dying. What death entails. And that, sadly, is the last one. I love the idea of this book. I think it's hilarious. I think it's fantastic. I think it's a great because I'm a therapist and it's a great like coffee table book to have. Sorry, but I wish I had more pages. It's just over too soon. Um, from what I recall, this same company or author, this is, it says created and written by Gary Greenberg. Um, there's also a pop-up book of nightmares and I don't know if it's the same author, but it's the same company I think that produces it. Because I'm pretty sure I saw that somewhere. But that might be an interesting one to get. Um, I got this from Santa. But when I've looked online and stuff. It's a pretty pricey book. Um, and I don't know that it's really worth the money. But I love that I have it now. So. Um, so there you go. That is the pop-up book of phobias that I got for Christmas. And it's fantastic. Um... Oh, I'll tell you this real quick before I pull up these other books. See my fizz? Guys, I have to cut soda out of my life. Um, my sister and I are doing a 21-day fix here in a, about 10 days. Which means I have to cut soda out. Guys, I'm used to having at least one fizz every day. Like a 32 ounce. Sometimes a 44 ounce. Sometimes two 32 ounces. It's like a stress relief thing for me. If I'm stressed out or have anxiety of some or whatever and I struggle with depression on the side and so um, if that's acting up or something fizz is always my go-to and somehow that helps things feel better which is so weird it's soda like what um so I'm trying really hard um I went the other day without any fizz and I was like yes well day one of my no soda was a fail I got a 32 ounce that day I couldn't handle it anymore it was giving me anxiety not having one um, the next day I went without, I've done really well, um, and now, like, I'm like, okay, well, my son, Tate, he's 14, he's always like, let's go to Fitz, you know you want it, you know you can't handle the cravings, he's a, he's a bum, anyway, if I end up going to Fizz for my anxiety or for whatever reason, I've, i I can be a little proud of myself, they spilled all over my cup, that wasn't me, that was them, but... I can be a little proud of myself. I went to 24 ounces. So down from 32, I'm at 24. So I figured this week, for the rest of this week, which is today's Friday, so tomorrow, if I get one, it can be a 24 ounce. Then after that, for the next week after that, it has to be a 16 ounce. And then I'll have to just cut it out. And then maybe if I have cheat days, I can allow myself a 16 ounce. But right now, I have my fizz, but it's less than normal, so that's good, right? Okay, guys, let me bring up, because these other two books were ones I listened to, so I don't have the physical book to show you. And I always wish I did. I wish I had the physical book to show you, even when I read them, uh, listen to them. Okay, so the next book I'm going to tell you about is this one. Let's see if I can get that to show up. I don't know. It's called The Gender Game by Bella Forrest. 
Um, this is kind of one of those dystopian things. And I think what pulled me in, it's like, for people who love Hunger Games and Divergent, you're going to love this book. And, I mean, I love dystopian books anyway. Um, I just love to read, right? Um, but guys, this was a pretty good book. It didn't go the direction I thought it was going to go. And um, it has a sequel that's come out, not on audio yet, so I've got to either decide to just read the sequel or wait for the audio version. Um, guys, it was really good. And at the beginning, I was like, eh. It was kind of, at the beginning, I was like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to like this. But I ended up really liking it and really, even towards the end, I was like, I don't know if I'll read the next one. This was a really good book, but I don't know if I'll read the next one. But I think I liked it enough to look into reading the next one. Um... Yeah, you got interested enough in the characters and stuff, and then plot twists happen at the end, and you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, it's really good. I really liked it. Um, so, gender games, so pretty much there's two separate worlds in this dystopian world, right? Two separate, they have the madras and the padras. So, the or the matris and the patris, I think is how they said it on the thing. Anyway. So one is like the women are the, they wear the pants of the family type of an idea. And the other is the men do. And the women are subservient to the men. And in the other one, the men are subservient to the women. Anyway, there's different rules and regulations that go on and, and things that happen. Um, she has a brother. Violet is the main character's name. She has a little brother that is, um, he disappears. The, the, she lives in Matris and the officials in Matris do a test I guess on on little boys and if they don't have the personality that fits in Matris then those boys they kind of get rid of them they send them off to some camp or something prison camp something anyway um and she just wants her brother back so she will kind of do whatever it takes anyway she gets herself in some trouble with the law and whatever um and she ends up being offered a chance to be able to see her brother again um but she has to um, she has to go into Patris and, and um, th they're setting her on a mission there kind of to accomplish some things and it really is good um, there were parts where I was like eh, whatever just hurry and get to you know whatever but it was a good book overall um, and like I said I want to read the sequel um, I think it, it's a good one it didn't have any bad language it didn't have any bad scenes in it. It didn't have any, um, yeah, like I'd let my 14 year old read this. I'd let my 12 year old read this. Um, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. So, um, I really enjoyed that book. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think what else I want to tell you about it. Oh, so there's three more books in this series. So, this one's the gender games, right? Yeah, the gender game. And then this same author, Bella Forrest, has written um, The Gender Secret, The Gender Lie, and The Gender War. The Gender Secret was published, I believe, in October of 2016. And then The Gender Lie was published in December of 2016, so right after each other. And then The Gender War is coming out in February or March. So... It is a series of four books. I don't generally like reading series because I don't like feeling... Um, pegged down to have to finish a series, you know, or wait for the next book to come out or, or whatever. But like I said, I was thinking, oh, I'll just read this first one. Right. But then by the end, I was like, I was drawn in and it was like, okay, I got to read the rest or at least the next one and see how it happens. And then it'll probably be a cliffhanger and I'll have to read the next one because this one ends in a cliffhanger. And like, and it really does guys, like it's all of a sudden all this crazy stuff happens and then it's over. The book ends and you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, back up. None of that just made sense. I mean, it does make sense, but you're just kind of like blown away. So that I would recommend, The Gender Game. Um, really good book. Um, I know that this author writes other books too, and none of them really appealed to me. I'm not, she writes some vampire books, and I'm not of the vampire genre or whatever you want to say, but... She writes a couple other 
uh, series. Anyway, this series was really good and I really liked it. So that is The Gender Game by Bella Forrest. Um, I've only put three stars, but I think maybe three and a half is more accurate. I don't know. That one's a hard one. Three and a half is probably more accurate. Maybe four. I don't know why I didn't just give it a four because I really... If a book, if I'm still thinking about it afterwards, and I've read another book since this one, so, and I'm still thinking back to this one thinking, oh yeah, that was good, oh yeah, oh yeah, you know, when I say still, I mean, it's been like two days or whatever, but still, um, that's a really good book, um, so, it probably deserves four stars from me, um, that is The Gender Game. The last book that I actually just finished today before doing this video, um, is one I picked up to read a couple months back and I got through part of it and it didn't hold my attention well enough and so I put it down and didn't go back to it. Um, the idea of this book is really fascinating. Um, so I'll show you what it is. It's The Double Bind by Chris and I want to say Bohalian. I think that's how you would say his last name, Chris Bahalian. Um, the Double Bind. So he writes a lot of books and a lot of people really love him as an author. I've never read any of his other books. Um, but this one has some moments in it where it it uses some language that I don't like. It It's very vulgar for a minute. I mean, it's there's a scene where she's being captured by some men and they're saying some vulgar things to her. Um, and I, it made me uncomfortable, that part. And then that exact same statements they made or brought up later that make me uncomfortable again. Um, and then there is in the book also some unnecessary sex scene description that goes on. Isn't necessary for the book at all. I don't like when that is the case, but it's in there. So be forewarned, um... As fascinating as this book may be, it does have those things. And in fact, there was a point where I was like, I don't want to read this because of those um, vulgar statements. And it's not, they, it was just words being, like it was, it was vulgar things these men were saying to her as they were capturing her. And uh, I just don't like, didn't like it. And I just kind of thought, I don't know if this whole book is going to be like that. I Definitely, I'm not going to read it. So I kept reading, and it didn't do that again until the very end, um, where it just repeated the exact same things again because she was remembering. Um, anyway, so if you can handle a little bit of that, read it, because it's a good book. Um, the idea of it's good. Now, there are some points where I'm still like, oh, I need to reread that and figure that out more, because once you find out the plot twists and stuff at the end... It's going along and it's a very intriguing page turning book where you're learning these things and it's fascinating. And then all of a sudden there's this plot twist at the end and it just wraps up. And I don't like that part. I feel like it wraps up too quickly to where you're like, wait a minute, what? Wait a minute. So you want to go back and read that last chapter like three times and make sure that you really read what you think you just read. Does that make sense? Um, really fascinating book, though. Um, this woman is assaulted. Um... She kind of has to deal with the aftermath of the assault. Um, it's a really long description, so I don't want to read it to you. But she deals with this assault, and then um, that kind of takes her on this different journey in life where she ends up meeting this homeless man who ends up meaning a lot to her. And he's a photographer, um, and she starts learning more about him, and he dies, and... She starts looking at his photographs and things and learns some things about his past and things and and about her past and how they're intertwined. Anyway, it really is good. And I don't know that I'm doing it justice talking about it, um, but it has some twists and turns in it that you're like, what? Wait a minute, what? Um, it it very deals with mental illness a lot. Um, I mean, like that's the underlying there's mental illness in this book. And that appeals to me because I love reading things about mental illness. In fact, in my book club, they'll always be like, okay, therapist, what do you think of the mental health of this person? Or what would you diagnose? So, because that's just how my brain works. Because I think that's what I do daily is therapy stuff. So my brain just thinks as a therapist, I guess. Um, anyway, 
the whole idea of this book is really cool. It brings in um, characters from The Great Gatsby, that book by uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald. It brings in some components and some characters from that book, so that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, guys, it was a really good book. I... It has this, look, it has this really, I don't know if you can even see, let me see, Woo, let's get some focus here. It has this really long description. <laughs> That's why I'm not reading it to you. Um, but definitely go on Goodreads. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. And in the book, it has photographs. So this homeless man, uh, Bobby, he is a photographer in the book, and he takes all these pictures of famous people and everything. Um, and it says in here... Um, it says in here... Behind the double bind, while Bobby Crocker, the photographer in the double bind, is fictitious, the photographs that appear in the book are real. So there are there are these photographs that are shown in the book, and they are real. They were taken by a man named Bob Soupy Campbell, um, who had gone from photographing luminaries from 1950s and 60s to winding up at a homeless shelter in northern Vermont. So um, the author, Bohalian, he was looking at Campbell's work, like saw his photographs um, after the phot photographer died. And that was kind of the inspiration for this book where he decided, you know, what would make a homeless man who has all these fantastic photos, what would make them suddenly hom homeless? What could be the backstory to that? And why would he hold on to these photographs all that time? So it really is a good book. Um, I'd recommend that. Um, because of the fast way that it just abruptly ends... Um, it just wraps everything up and whoop, it's done. Um, for that reason and the vulgarity in it, the unneeded sex scene, I did only give it three stars. Um, but take that as whatever, um, however you want to take that. Um, it really, it, it was a good book and, it, and it's well written for the most part, other than those things that I don't feel need to be in there. Um... I get that it defines the characters, the assaultists, whatever you want to call them, the perpetrators. That's probably the right word. Um, I get that it kind of helps you see what kind of horrible people they were, but it just wasn't comfortable vocabulary for me to read or listen to. Anyway, um, if you're an audio listener of this book, don't listen to it with kids around because you don't want that stuff to just jump out while your kids are around. Um, yeah, and I wouldn't have my teenagers read this book. I wouldn't. Um, and maybe that I'm too prim and proper. I don't know. I don't think I am in that sense. I mean, I read a lot of books. I read a lot of things. But for me, um, I just don't think I'd have my teenager read it. So there you go. Take that as you want. Whatever. I'm just here on this side of the camera telling you my opinions. You don't have to take them. Um, anyway, so that's the double bind. So those are the four books I want to talk about today. The three that I've read, well, and the pop-up book that I've read, but technically it can't, it's only like a couple pages long, but it was so cool. I had to show you. Um, the next books I'm reading, see, I, should I tell you what books I'm going to read next or should I leave it a secret? Because what if I tell you I'm going to read these books and then I decide not to? Or, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I am right now reading, um, why can't I think? Let me look it up. I know what it's called. I just can't think of the author's first name. Leanne, I think, maybe. Let's look. Okay, guys, let's look. Yes. I am reading um, The Last Anniversary by Leanne Moriarty. She writes um, The Husband's Secret and Big Little Lies, which are both really good books. I've read both of those. I've read some others of hers that I really like. The Hypnotist Love Story and I don't know what else, but she writes really good books um, that usually have some kind of twist in them that are fun. 
um, and she's really good at her characters and um, and drawing you into the book. So the last anniversary, I've just barely started. Um, I'm reading that on my Kindle. Um, my audiobook that's next up is called. Oh, <laughs> I'm looking around for my iPad to tell you what my audiobook is, and it's right here in front of me. Um, let me see if I can find it. Maybe not. Um, because I don't yet have it marked on my Goodreads as currently reading. Um, it's called They Call Me Crazy by Kelly Stone Gamble is the next audio I'm listening to. And then um, the next book I'm reading, reading, is How to Be Lost by Amanda Iyer Ward. I've read another book of hers before, and now for some reason I cannot think of what it's called. I should be better prepared, guys. I think it was called Brooklyn. I think that's the one I read by her. No. Under the Same Sky, maybe. Wait, let me look. Let me get my Goodreads app pulled up here, guys, and I will tell you. Amanda Iyer Ward. Um, the Same Sky, um, which we read for Book Club last year in May, I believe. Um, not that that's relevant to any of you guys when I read it or that it was for Book Club. Um, it was a pretty good book. Um, yeah, it kind of took two, if I remember right, it kind of took two stories one of a girl from a different country, I think. And yeah, Honduras, someone in Honduras and someone in America and their stories, it's telling their stories and they intertwine at the end and it was really good. Um, so How to Be Lost is my next book. And the way I choose my next books to read, guys, at this point, it used to be that I'd be like, oh, that sounds good and that'd be my next book. However, I have acquired so many books um, because I'm a book hoarder and on my Kindle, on my Audible account and in person, like physical books that now it's just like, Hey, whatever one's next in my pile, um, is what I'm reading. Now I'm going to veer away from that in the next little while because I ordered this book at Christmas. Um, I let you go by Claire McIntosh. I do not remember what it is that really appealed to me so much when I read the reviews or the plot synopsis, but I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to read this now. So that is next after I read How to Be Lost. Um, that'll be the next one. Anyways, those are my upcoming books. Um, I feel like I wanted to tell you guys something else. I don't know. I haven't had any craft projects lately to do. I think Christmas got my brain crafted out for a little while or something. Or I just don't have any to do. January's kind of dull and boring. And freezing cold. Guys, it was negative two when I was driving my kids to school this morning. It was cold. And I saw this poor kid turn and like his car hit ice or something. He went up and over a fire hydrant. I felt so bad for him. He was a high school kid. He was headed to the high school and like I felt so bad for him. Um, anyway, be safe out there guys. Um, stay warm and if it's really cold, just get yourself a hot chocolate and a really good book. Um, yeah. So, I guess that's all I have to tell you guys. Those are my book reviews. If you have questions or comments, leave me some comments below. And I think you have to scroll clear down to the bottom to be able to leave comments, I think. Or you can always message me on my Instagram, which is shoes, period, that, period, sparkle. Um, or my other Instagram is Stephanie Pete, if you know me on there. Whichever. You guys can use whichever. I Whatever. You can message me on there for book ideas or book questions. Um, I'm on Goodreads under Stephanie Peterson. Um... Stephanie is spelled S-T-E-F-A-N-I-E, -E, and Peterson is with an E-N, if you're trying to find me. Um, it's a funky picture of me, like, going like this or something weird, I don't know. Um, if you find me on there, I think that's all I have to tell you guys. So, I hope you guys are having a good January. Get a lot of reading done. January's not a busy hustle-bustle month. There's no real big holiday. Um, there is Martin Luther King Day or Human Rights Day coming up, where... 
kids, at least in my school district, have that day off and the next day after that is off also. Um, maybe that'll be some good reading time because you don't have to get kids off to school or maybe you read better when your kids are at school. Um, anyway, find some good books to read. Tell me what your good books are. I want to know all about what you're reading and, and what's good and what's not good and and oh, all of that. I wish you guys were here live with me and we could have a whole conversation. I just need to have a book club every day of my life um, to be able to discuss all these books. Anyway, guys, I hope you're having a good January. Pick up a good book. Um, and I'll see you next time. Have a good day. See ya.